Hey everybody, welcome to day 25 of the 28 Days of Blessing, and I am here in the studio again with our engineer Colton Houston. Need to give a shout out to him for all the good he's doing, and I am also privileged to have in the studio none other than Pastor Oren Paget. Oren, welcome. Glad you're here today. Thanks so much, PK. Happy to be here, man. Let's jump in. Chapter 25 is entitled, In All Circumstances. And uh, he's quoting from the scripture where Paul says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And he, rightfully so, talks about how much of a struggle this scripture has been for him. What a challenge it's been. And you yourself were telling me that it was a a real struggle for you. Um, but I want to draw attention to the fact that he doesn't say uh, that he never tells us to feel grateful. He always tells us to be grateful. Yeah. And so that kind of let me off the hook to know that that just because I'm not feeling the emotion of gratitude in the middle of a situation doesn't mean that I can't be thankful. That, that I can't, by faith, utter a thanksgiving to God for whatever, for his goodness in the middle of that bad circumstance. Have, yeah. has, that, has that been uh, somewhat of a challenge for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think for all of us, right, you read that verse, and if you're being real with yourself, you're probably going, yeah, right, that's, that's actually impossible, you know? Um, but it's like the Lord tells us, I think it's in Matthew 29, he says, you know, humanly speaking, that's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And Terry mentions it's with the help of the Holy Spirit that we're actually able to be thankful in all things. Yeah, that's the truth. That's good. Um, he also talks, he, he also, I love the line in here where he says, we give oxygen to good and beautiful things when we focus on them. Um, we have a choice in life. We can focus on the negative Or we can turn around and see a little bit deeper and focus on positive or what things are still going right for us in life. What did God say about the circumstance that we're in? What did he promise he was going to do? What about the character of his heart? Like God spoke to me one time when I was sitting in a coffee shop and he said, you trusted in my arm for my power. Yeah. But can you trust in my heart? for my character when the sun goes down and you don't, I don't move like you thought I should move in your situation. So can we, can we look a little past God's arm to his heart and see that if, if we know he's a loving father who knows where we are. And if we're in a situation a day, a week, a month, a year longer than we thought we should be there, can we trust that our father's a good God and that he's not being mean to us, but he's, ultimately performing some kind of purpose in us yeah that's so good i thinking you know back in my life gosh it's been a couple years ago now and i i may have shared this story before but i remember sitting at my kitchen table one day and had just been going through a terrible bout with anxiety for gosh it had probably been almost a year at that point and i was getting to the point where i was really struggling in my faith struggling in what i believe struggling in where god was And I shared that with my wife, and I remember her point blank just asking me, if he never takes it away, is he still good? Mm. If he never takes it away, do you still love him? Do you still get to go to heaven? And as she began to remind me of that truth, it somehow was able to pull me out of that that little pit of despair, so to speak. And so it's been something that I regularly remind myself of. I have to take my eyes off the circumstance that's in front of me. And mm-hmm. put my eyes back on Jesus and know that I have hope that the world doesn't have. I know that he's he's never let me down yet, right? Like, why would he start now? Yeah. Um, and he even promises us, like, <clears throat> I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And and those are the things that we have to constantly tell ourselves during those difficult times. That's so good, Oren. Um, I don't know if you're watching the series called The Chosen, um, but season three just came out uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, Melissa and I were watching it, and of course I know that they they combine hist- uh, they combine scripture with some of the historical knowledge, like from secular uh, historians like Josephus, wow. to fill in some of the blanks. 
And so this is not scripture, but I thought it was a powerful statement where James the Lesser, one of Jesus' disciples, is being sent out by Jesus to heal the sick when he sent out the disciples. And he told him, he said, I, he had a crippled leg. And he said, how, you, how am I going to go out and heal people when you haven't healed my leg? Huh. And Jesus says, do you believe that I'm able? And he said, of course. And he said, but do you trust my heart to know that how much more powerful would it be for you to be praying for people and them look at you and you're still dealing with your condition but even in your condition you're still preaching the healing power of jesus Mm. he said i can't trust everybody with that grace yeah but i can trust you with it and i thought that was so powerful to for us to be able even when god's not doing for us it spoke to me oh yeah When, when he's not doing for us what we think he ought to do can I still give him thanks and can I still preach his word even when I don't see it manifesting in my life yet the way I believe it should be? Yeah, that's so good. And it, man, that's powerful. I had not heard that story. So Mm -hmm. that's, that just gave me goosebumps when you were sharing it. But it reminds me again, going through that difficult season, running into people on a regular basis who would tell me, man, I'm dealing with anxiety and for the first time in my life, I was able to relate to them on a very deep level. And uh, even one time I was in Subway and I ran into a guy I hadn't seen in years and he forgot his wallet. So I paid for lunch. We sat across from each other and he starts telling me he recently went through a divorce. He's battling anxiety. And right there, I was able to just stop and pray for him. And that just happened regularly. But before I had no idea what these people were going through. I was just like, oh, you know, you just need to get in the word. You need to pray. You need to have a stronger mind. But because of the difficulty I was in, I was able to relate on a on a level that I never had been able to relate before. That's yeah, I love that. Uh, last thing that I, I saw in this chapter I really liked was uh, Stanford University's course, "The Science of Willpower," has research that reveals that when people focus on the negative in their lives, they open themselves up to temptation and they harm their ability to affect positive change. And so if you're out there today and you're listening in the car or the house and your kids are with you, plug their ears for a moment or do a la, 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 la real quick because (laughs) I'm going to quote the book. They said that there's a form of science in this context that they call the what the hell effect. And that means when you've already messed up, something bad's going on, you're thinking, wow, why should I even try? I'm just going to go ahead and do it all the way because it's not going to get better for me. But he says that we need to practice and propose the what the heaven effect and focus on the positive things. Um, So, Oren, I would love it uh, if you just maybe comment on that real quick and then just pray for the people, um, however you feel to pray for them on this wise. Yeah. So I think that's a powerful uh, study, and it's, you know, it's been, um, I guess, proven numerous times just listening to therapists and being in therapy myself one of the things they recommend is get a journal you know every day write something in there whether it's one thing or three things just something small that you're thankful for and out of that heart of gratitude you know it's scriptural the lord tells us like if you if you're thankful for the things i've already done for you i'm going to guard your heart and mind and it's that word guard is a military term it's like a it's like a soldier standing guard to protect your heart and your mind and that's what God promises us if we'll, you know, continue to be thankful even in the midst of our difficult circumstances. And mm-hmm. so today, Lord, I just I just come to you, God, and I just, you know, I was told one time that we celebrate you on mountaintops, but we get to know you in the valleys. And I know that there's people who are in their own valley right now, God. They're in their own difficulties, um, some of which I was able to, to speak to people in the lobby just this Sunday. Um, everyone faces things. Everyone has hard times. But God, help us to never forget that your grace is enough, that your love is enough, that our hope is in you, that we will someday be walking with you on streets of gold, just loving on you and spending time with you. And there will be no more sorrow, no more tears, just laughter and joy and peace. And uh, until then, God, we just ask that your angels come around us. Let us fellowship with one another and lean on each other to get through difficult times and just always keep our faith and our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day today. We love you.